Good evening. evening. And Merry Christmas. So nice to have you here um, at the 10 o'clock service. It's not quite snow when we walk out, and so that's all right. We don't have to shovel that. Um, But thank you for coming tonight. There's um, a little black book by the aisles. If you can sign your name and there's somebody sitting with you, pass it on down, that would be great. Um, For communion, we'll have, first of all, everyone is invited for communion. It's Jesus who invites you. I would invite you too, but it's really Jesus who invites you to communion. So all are invited to commune. If you feel more comfortable just staying in the pew, we have some little all-in-ones that are um, out in the the narthex, so you could have those. And also, hopefully you were able to pick up um, a candle for the singing of Silent Night. Anything, any other announcements? Then please let us sing the first two verses of come now, O Prince of Peace, and you can, you can stay seated. On the first Sunday of Advent, we lit a candle for hope. On the second Sunday, we lit a candle for peace. On the third Sunday, we lit a candle for joy. Last Sunday, we lit a candle for love. Now the time has come to light a candle for Christ. As the flame of the Christ candle begins to burn, the angels sing, the shepherds draw near, and the magi offer their gifts. We too are here with Jesus to offer our gifts and to sing the praise to God, as they did so long ago in Bethlehem. Let us bow in prayer now, listening for God's spirit in the silence. Let your spirit shine in our hearts. Let your love shine in our world. And let the wonder of this day touch all of our hearts as the Christ child invites us into God's love. Amen. stand as you are able as we sing joy to the world.
the grace of the Holy One of Israel, the Word made flesh, born of Mary, be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah, the ninth chapter, beginning with the second verse. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you, as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulder, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. We will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reason, reading is from Titus, the second chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures. We should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God, while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, will be revealed. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Let us sing together, Angels We Have Heard on High. stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for him. This is the word of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us sing together, I am so glad each Christmas Eve.
That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. You will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. Back in 2020, when we were in the midst of COVID and we were having a, it was a cold Christmas out in the parking lot. And we also had an online service and a member of the congregation, Marilyn Cardello, if you knew Marilyn, um, she and her husband Sal have been in Kenosha for 37 years. And she was a voice teacher. She was a soloist. She sang with the Robert Shaw Chorale. I mean, an amazing, amazing voice. And I thought, for our online service, wouldn't it be cool to have Marilyn sing Oh Holy Night? So. Where is the best place to make a recording? In the bathroom. And so she did. And she sent Maggie this a cappella um, recording, and her pitch was just spot on. And Maggie was able to add an organ track to that. And then we put that up, posted that on, um, on our Christmas of 2020 online service. We lost Marilyn this past year. And Maggie said, you know, maybe what we should do is to play the um, O Holy Night, that recording that she made of O Holy Night and sing along with that. And so we will do that tonight. Um, her family was at the last service and they said, oh, mom would have really liked this. And so um, please join Marilyn singing, Oh, Holy Night.
When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Our next uh, hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. Stand as you are able as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Prince of Peace. You rule the earth with truth and justice. Send your gift of peace to all nations of the world. Blessed are you, Son of Mary. You share our humanity. Have mercy on the sick, the dying, and all who suffer this day. We lift up before you those in our church community, our families and friends, those known and those unknown. We ask that you would surround and bring comfort and hope. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated.
in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we are reminded that Christ is present, who calls us, gathers us, forgives us, and sends us out to reflect that light of Christ in the world. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those who are receiving communion in the pew, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please come for all is ready. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. 
Amen. Let us pray. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive your word. Silence in us any voice but your own, so that by hearing we may believe and by believing we may obey your will. Revealed to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know if you remember a few, well, more than a few years ago, many years ago, Robert Fulgham wrote a book, All I Ever Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. You remember that book? You know, and it's true. Wash your hands, be kind, flush. You know, the important things in life. But he also wrote in this collection of uh, of little essays, what he wanted for Christmas. And he said, I do know what I want someone to get me for Christmas. And I've known it since I was 40 years old. Wind up mechanical toys that make noises and go round and round and round. And they do funny things. No batteries, no batteries, you know, those wind up. Toys that need me to help them out from time to time. Those, that old-fashioned painted tin that, that I had as a child. Nobody believes me, but that's what I want to tell you. Well, okay, it's close, but not quite exactly. I delight in, delight in simplicity is what I want foolishness and fantasy and noise, angels and miracles and wonder and innocence and magic. That's closer to what I really want. But what I really, really, really want for Christmas is just this. I want to be five years old again just for an hour. I want to be five years old and I want to laugh a lot. And I want to cry a lot. And I want to be picked up and held and rocked to sleep and carried upstairs and tucked into bed. I really want that for Christmas is my childhood. And I think about that. I think about that especially at Christmas, that innocence of a five-year-old, and to watch them waiting, waiting for Santa Claus to come, and waiting with the magic and the wonder and the awe of the lights and everything, and I want that safe and secure feeling that I had, thankfully, from my parents who would rock me to sleep, who would carry me to bed and tuck me in at night, and where I really didn't know what was going on in the world, I just knew I was safe and secure with my mom and dad. That's the beauty of a five-year-old. Unfortunately, I grew up, doesn't look like it, but <laughs> and I sometimes don't act like it. But I think about the innocence that is lost. And I think about when the, I, when the prophet Isaiah talks about darkness. And it doesn't take much, does it? to look at the news, to see what's happening in Israel and Gaza. And if you get a chance to be able to see a manger scene in Bethlehem, there in bombed out rubble are Mary and Joseph 
and a baby. I think about the horror and the violence and all that the innocents there are going through. And then I think about people I know, many of you tonight, who have gone through just really difficult, dark times. The loss of loved ones. And watching people go through horrible struggles. And I think, too, of those facing diagnosis or not knowing the diagnosis and waiting for that. I think about broken relationships, of relationships where people hurt each other and don't talk. I think about families that, are, that have broken apart, And I think we know that darkness, don't we? It doesn't take much to be able to see the darkness that happens all around us. And not just us, but with people that we love. Isaiah talked about the people who walk in darkness. A lot of you know that darkness that's going on in your lives and it's so difficult. And you wonder, is there hope? Being a Christian means that we acknowledge that darkness exists that we live in darkness from others. We live in darkness from ourselves. We live in darkness. But here's the difference. Being a Christian means that we don't have to live in darkness. Because in the midst of the darkness of life, God says, I've come to bring a light a light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Because even now, we have light coming in. We aren't in complete darkness. But there was, on a night like tonight, in Bethlehem, there was a light that shone in the darkness and the glory of the Lord shone around those shepherds. The shepherds who were, who were the lowest of the low in the social strata of Israel. These shepherds who lived in muck and mud and dirt and yet it's the angels that came to them to said, today in the city of David, there is a light that has come into this world, a light that no darkness can overcome. And that light, maybe it's feeble, but that light was in a manger a stable, because there was no room at the inn. And I think about the darkness that happens in our lives, and we think, but God doesn't want to come to our muck and messiness. And you know what? God knows what we are going through, each and every one of us. And God knows your fears, and God knows the struggles, and God knows the grief, and God knows your sadness. And God says, I am sending you a light, a light 
that this darkness cannot overcome. That light is to bring hope. That light is to bring healing. And that light comes to us in the middle of our muck and dirtiness and messiness of our lives and says, you know what, I am here with you and I will not leave you and I will not forsake you. This is the light that comes to us this day. A light that can start out kind of feeble, but a light that shines in the darkness to bring hope, to bring healing, And that's why we can have hope in the midst of grief. That's why we can have joy in the midst of sadness. Not this happy, wild joy, but it's that knowledge that Christ came to us in the lowest of means, that no one had a birth. He didn't come to theologians. They'd take too long trying to consult what it all meant. He didn't come to royalty. He came to this poor young girl and boy and said, you are going to be parents of fully God and fully man. Emmanuel means God is with us. And that's that hope that in the midst of the darkness, there is a light that shines. And the darkness has not overcome it. Do you realize that? And this is where we step in. Because God comes to us in the midst of that darkness. And he says, I send Christ as the light. And you are not the light, but you are called to reflect that light, to know that we reflect that light to one another. We are called to go and love as you have been loved. We are called to forgive as you have been forgiven. We are called to bring the hope and love of Christ to one another. We don't have to do huge, great things, but to be kind, to be caring, to see the needs of other people. That's what it means to reflect the light of Christ here and now. So arise. Shine, for your light has come, and the glory of thy people Israel. Amen. Please stand as you are able.
May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. The Lord bless you now and forever. Amen. Go peace. Share the gift of Jesus born in a manger. Thanks be to God.